Oh, look at these cute dummies. Every now and then, yeah, there it goes. Little little ones fall over every now and then. <laughs> a little terrifying how they have a mouth that splits their entire head in half. At first glance, you're like, oh, it's just a bird with a beak and all that, right? But then it seems like the eyes are split on complete opposite sides of the giant mouth that is their whole head. That's a lot. It's a lot to take in, honestly. Don't totally love that. <laughs> like every, like anything in Subnautica, the closer you look, the more off-putting it can get. Hey, everybody! How's it going? I, uh, the people behind Subnautica were nice enough to give me a press code for early access to the 1.0 version of this game. Yes, the top right corner st does say early access still, but I verified like the version number, and it's like the the one that's supposed to be the the preview press thing. So this should all be correct. If you're new here, hey, I did a god like an almost 90 episode series on Subnautica, the first game. Uh, in that case, I went in blind in the 1.0 version of the game, and I'm doing that once again today, having once again not touched the early access, so it's all fresh in the finished form and all that. And uh, over the course of that playthrough, we did more or less discovered that I seemed to have thalassophobia because I was having a real bad time and a great time. It's a really, I have a really mixed feeling about this whole thing because uh, on one hand, this shit's terrifying and I hate the ocean and leviathans are horrible and this is an entirely terrifying, terrible concept. On the other hand, this is the most, not only fully featured and polished, but also, like, the most enjoyable open-world survival crafting thing. Like, it's an entire genre of kind of tedious, boring, glitchy bummer of games. And Subnautica was such a huge breath of fresh air. And, and it also has a lot of stuff I like, because I love exploring. And I love having both narrative and gameplay mechanics that both stoke my curiosity and reward it. And so it was just a joy and a terror at the same time. Incredibly mixed feelings. But hey, sequel's out, and I've patiently waited for the 1.0 version once again. If you want to get caught up on my playthrough of the original game, there's a link in the description to that playlist. It'll be separate from the one for this game, because it's not short. Let's see. Oh, Survival Freedom Hardcore. So freedom is without any of the survival mechanics. Hardcore, you only have one life and it doesn't tell you how much oxygen you have. Creative is just you get to build a big old, yeah, it's like Minecraft. You get to build a big base with no requirements for resources and you just kind of screw around and do that. Yeah, we're playing the game, the game, the main game, the normal version of game. But I don't know the story or the setting. I don't know if the setting is the same planet? I think that it might be. But I'm not sure how you follow up the story of the first game, or what that's gonna mean. So I'm curious about that. Look at the little penguin loading bar. Keeps going up to the edge of the bar. I don't know if I've, if I've seen an animated bar that's quite that style exactly. That's interesting. All right, what could go wrong? This is the farthest that I could take you on company space bucks, Robin. You sure you want this? The research is in everything. It is to me and Sam. I need to know what happened. The meteor storm. I can use it for cover from Altera's eyes. <sighs> Gonna miss you, Robin. I'll find my way back. Okay, different. This time we're stranding ourselves. 45, 46 feet. Surface temperature is Drop on deployed. Okay, there we go. Welcome to 45, 46 feet. Enjoy your stay. I, 
Okay. Thanks for that. Well, that sounded familiar. I think that is the same planet. So this time we stranded ourselves instead of having it happen on accident. And, uh... Well... The stranding probably was not an accident. <laughs> Coming here was on purpose, though. We, uh... Seem to have goofed up. We're on land at first. Some flares... Okay, so I can retrieve some stuff from the crash. On survival. Okay, we have some warnings about surviving. Maybe not the best context for that, I'm a little concerned about the meteor storm. Maybe get into some cover first. Uh, okay, temperature... I have, okay, I have a new time limit. So we have oxygen, water, food, and health. All of which diminish constantly over time except health, I guess. But now we... Holy smokes. That did not go as planned. Hi? We should find a way into the water and get to the drop pod. Oh, I'm warm. Oh. That's like a heat organism. <laughs> it, it does give off big heat lamp vibes, like... They have a particular monster design sensibility where they have, like, the gasopods from the last game that were, like, they just had gas masks for faces. <laughs> and it's like, guess what? They fight you with gas! And it's like, this guy looks like a... some kind of heat lamp, and he just looks at you and heats you up. It's nice of him. Why is he doing that? I'm not really sure. I'm inherently untrustful of any organism that baits you with the thing that you probably want like an angler fish it makes me think that he somehow like benefits from this do I get close enough that he bites me alright arctic survival almanac on arrival welcome to adventure mode xeno worker you have arrived in arctic climate your great expedition begins your xeno works pda is equipped to monitor your temperature and vital signs since you have downloaded the Arctic Survival Almanac, it will also dispense advice from time to time. For the benefit of future adventurers, your device will also record observations and findings you make. Survival Checklist. Retreat to a safe environment. Administer first aid if required. Retrieve emergency supplies if available. Survey the, avail the environment for threats and resources. Find and construct a reliable habitat. Construct necessary survival equipment using the habitat's fabricator. Locate other survivors using line of sight or the radio. Maintain physical and psychological health until rescue. Other survivors. Last time we were on the Aurora, which was this huge vessel full of people that crashed. This time it kind of felt like we were alone. So I'm not sure who else would be... Well, oh no, she said she, said she has to know what happened. And something about Sam? Someone named Sam that's important to her, I assume? So I think they're not investigating the Aurora and what happened in the, in the first game. I think something new has happened and she's investigating that. Which makes sense, because, you know, stick to your formula. They probably want to establish there being some kind of wreckage and various past stuff. Last time we were uncovering a narrative and featuring other survivors from the past and, like, what happened to them over the course of a series of ruined settlements we encountered. So, like, it's hard to do that if there's no one here. So there might be already a... Uh, people to follow up on again. The surface. Adventurers exploring the surface in cold weather climates are advised to take additional precautions. High winds can result in rapid onset hypothermia. Keep an eye out for natural shelter or restorative hot springs. If wearing a standard issue AEP suit, bodies of water may provide a safety, safety from extreme cold. Unexpected detours occur. You never know how long you'll be away from your home base. Remember to pack a lunch and a toasty hot beverage if possible. We can't say this enough. Layers. Invest in investing in a quality cold suit is certain to pay dividends in warmth and safety. Remember, when in doubt, don't go out. So here's our new dynamic. We have, strangely enough, land in Subnautica. I mean, there was some land in Subnautica, but there seems to be like entire mechanics built around it here. We got heat lamp plants. Hello? Got a, a temperature meter. They were saying that if I have my suit, my the temperature might be regulated by water. So I think the cold temperatures thing might be only a mechanic in the land segments of the game. 
Which honestly will just be like a welcome vacation from the terrifying ocean parts. There's a little bit of mixed messaging around this game as it was being announced. At first it sounded like it was going to be an expansion or a DLC. But now it's like a decently expensive standalone game. So, I don't know. I'm kind of running with the assumption that this game's actually like just as big as the original one was. Despite original... Uh, the original plan maybe not being so extreme. I think they they fully committed to a full sequel. It's definitely a standalone full like it's, it's it's a sequel as far as I can tell. Question is which things will they repeat and which things will change? Such as going are we going to be going deeper and deeper again? It's a pretty reasonable way of uh Handling that kind of mechanic. Honestly, the, the depth mechanics were just kind of a genius way of constantly gating your progress and encouraging you to explore outward in a very organic way instead of constantly just being told what to do. You naturally wanted to see more. So you would. Except for the part where it's terrifying. I less wanted to see that part. I suppose <laughs> these are pretty scattered out. I probably should just rip off the band-aid and hop in. Yeah. I'm just gonna get colder and deader the longer I stay up here. Let's start at the shore. Ease our way in. So I can retreat. Based on what I see. A peeper! Okay, so we're on the same planet. I heard it was number, 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 number B, so I figured it was the same planet. Because I remember the B better than the numbers. Ooh. Got some limestone. Right, we have the thing where there's different types of outcrops, but each one's like a dice roll of which of the minerals it has inside. The peepers look floppier than before. Oxygen. Oh, right. I have like no capacity for breathing. What do we got here? S Ooh, sea glide fragment. Um, did I just throw a flare at accident? No. I don't like this. Okay. What is that? Tentacle thing with a lot of like glowy barnacles on it. They look like gears, don't they? Interesting. So until I have a scanner and a fabricator, I can't do that much. I inherently see that sea glide fragment and want to scan it to get busy. But I don't have... What, what are you? Oh, it's the penguin things from the start screen. I briefly thought it was like a rabbit ray. So I may be a little out of, out of touch on how to play this game. I have not played it again since the original playthrough three or four years ago, I think? It's been a while, actually. Time flies. So far, nothing's coming at me. These are incredibly beautiful games. Hey, hello. All right, titanium, a couple extra flares than I probably need, I suppose. Blueprints. Wow, we start with a lot. Okay, so materials, basically more materials, but complex materials. First priority should be to get an O2 tank and fins. Oh, and a scanner. So that's a battery and titanium. Titanium you just get, so what's a battery? Battery. A ribbon plant times two and a copper ore. Bins are silicone rubber. And an O2 tank is titanium and fiber mesh. Fiber mesh is made of... Yeah, so we, let's find some vines. Ribbon plant, though, that's new. But yeah, creep vine samples, ribbon plant. Just kind of gather whatever I find, honestly. It's all useful now because I don't have any of anything. But scanner, I feel like, is a priority because I'm going to be kicking myself every time I find something. 
We good? We good? I guess that was just thunder. Yeah, every time... Every time I find something that seems scannable and I can't scan it, I'm gonna lose my mind a little bit. So let's try to get that established. Found the drop pod. Holy smokes! That did not go as planned. I should find a way into the water and get to the drop pod. Interesting. So everything she says is a playable voice line in case you need to review that. We just got a message from Sam. Whoa. I want to offer my sincerest condolences on the passing of your sister. I got to know Sam better towards the end of my mandate with Altera on 4546B, when we were thrown together as base mates at Outpost Zero. She spoke often and fondly of you. I thought you should know it didn't sit right with me when Altera blamed Sam's death on negligence. The Samantha Ayu I met was many things. Kind, clever, devoted to her work, but never negligent. I wish I could offer you something more substantial, but my access to information has been cut off. You may be in a better position to look into things than I am. If you're able to, Delta Station was our HQ. They were in a big hurry to leave, and there might still be information to be found there. It has a big radio tower. Impossible to miss. I hope you find the answers you seek. Lillian Bench. Ah, he last is Bench. Just seemed funny to me. Um, blame her death on negligence. Hmm. Wish I could offer you something more substantial. Information is cut off. Don't necessarily have verification. Well, Sam, I guess I might as well gather some tools and resources before starting my search. Hope that radio tower is as easy to spot as Lil said. Ah. To eat a bit. Nighttime now. Look at this. All this beautiful bioluminescence that they used to make it so this place isn't just overwhelmingly unusable night. New creature discovered. Oh, I'm just choking its little eyeball neck. They're way, they're bigger than I thought they were a little bit, aren't they? New blueprint synthesized. Filtered water. Oxygen. Oh right, it's a bit of an issue. So may maybe I missed a detail, or maybe we'll see as we go. But I don't think it was super verified. New creature discovered. The Arctic peeper. I don't think it was super verified how Sam died, or even that it was necessarily like a death that was the kind that would come with like you know a body. Hearing, some, hearing something bigger, I think. Okay, that this this flare is really in the way. So I'm wondering if the, if I assume Sam's down here somewhere. I'll be curious to see if there's any evidence of like what happened to her. I mean, there will be, of course, it's the story. I mean, I'm worried. I'm concerned whether or not they're just alive. What if they're alive down here and it's just. It was easier to give up on them, so they were just written off as dead. Ribbon plants contain electrolytic materials that can be used in energy storage. Here's our ribbon plants. That was an easy enough find. How big are they? Surprisingly, not that big. It's the kind of item that I often expect to be like this big, chunky... There you go. A big, chunky, uh... Like, two-by-two two chunk of inventory. This O2 this O2 tank needs to happen quickly. <laughs> I was tempted to. It's, it's actually really weirdly in this case. It's they make they managed to make it seem more inviting down there. The sun's coming up a bit now, so I think so. It's getting a little warmer, but having it just be a dark void up here and being this like beautiful, vibrant scale sprawling environment here definitely made this feel more welcoming then you remember you're in the ocean and you're like maybe I shouldn't be so happy about this what are you maybe not much of anything for now
Huh. It's vaguely threatening looking, isn't it? This overhanging thing. So we have those messages from Sam, so I'll get more conscious from that. Should have pointed out a little quicker that I was aware of that. I'm putting it off a little bit just to establish a little bit of gameplay progress before we spend the entire episode just listening to audio logs and then say that, saying, come back next time. Oh, wow, I need a compass. I'm realizing the mess I get into a little bit, not even knowing which direction's which. Oxygen. We have a bit of a starting thing going on here with all these, uh... These ribbon plants for our electrical crafting. That should be for the battery. I think the ribbon plant might be a replacement for the acid shrooms. Oxygen. Oh! Oh! Yep. Yep. No, we're good. Okay, just encountered the inevitable fear of the fact that this is a an, an ice game. I figured this was going to come up, but that surprised me a little bit. Are these dangerous? What's that? What's that? Oh, it's not friendly, is it? Oh! No. Oh, no. Get out. Oh, I have to break out. Oh, you little prick. I don't like you at all. All these different resource types, though. Available immediately. Is that salt? Oxygen. And quartz? So we have salt and quartz immediately. Oh wow, that was not a good encounter. Ugh. Nothing scary yet though. That thing's scary on a mechanical level and that it encases you in ice and watches you drown, which is pretty fucked up, but it looks goopy as it looks doofy as fuck. Silly little bastard, so I'm not really that concerned about running into him. What are you? What are you? What are you? Also, creature egg. Oh, there's the kelp. Oxygen. I'm gonna be needing that. Okay, yeah. So that was the moment I heard this was a, it was just gonna be well, you know, it's called Below Zero. The moment I knew it was a cold game, the big concern was how that was gonna impact oxygen, because water freezes, and when water freezes, you're a bit freaking concerned. Because that, was that an acid shroom? Are they still around? Bullseye shroom. The issue is that if water freezes, then you can't swim back to the surface if it's solid ice. Let's get to the surface real quick, and then I'll make a, a run for it. Because I might have to dodge these guys. What are they? Like mermaids? Something like that? They're much less scary than the stalkers were, being a shark thing. Although I got really fam I got really comfortable with the sharks eventually. New blueprint synthesized. Inventory full. Oh yeah, those those are chunky still. Do I have a little space? No. No. No more gathering. That was the funny curve. Is uh, last game I got to the kelp forest and it was kind of terrifying. Like this, this one's pretty. Oh shit. This one's pretty like sparse and colorful and. It doesn't block your line of sight that much, and uh, and the creatures in it seem to be silly mermaid-looking creatures. But last time, the things that I found in there were shark things, and I'm like, that's not a good start. Not happy about this. That was a bad time. And then the... Uh... Oh, do I have a cold meter in here? Just because I'm standing, I guess? 
I swear the the old the old uh, kelp forest I think was like much more like foggy and and foreboding. This time it's kind of chill. I wonder if that was a choice they made. A little curious about that. I'm gonna make a little room just so it doesn't get in the way of my crafting. I don't know what the, how, how this is gonna go. Let's see here. Resources, basic materials. We can make some glass. Some lubricant. Silicone rubber. Got a few different things here. Get some batteries. I'm being a little haphazard here, just clicking on whatever is in front of me. Well, that's a few of everything. Let's see what I can... Let's see. So, fins. Two silicone rubber. I gotcha. That's good. I need a fiber mesh to make an O2 tank. Seek fluid intake. Flashlight and... Okay, scanner. We can already make the scanner. So I can get I can get busy right, there. I have a scanner. One more battery and I can make a flashlight. I'll probably want that. Yeah, nothing especially scary th this time yet. But I remember like the the stalkers really scared me at first, but then this game hit me with so much worse stuff and you had to get so familiar with these the stalkers just because they were around all the time. Did I make more rubber? I could use a knife. Eventually they were just my my stupid doofy neighbors. An air bladder. Emergency flotation device? Huh. Bladder fish and silicone rubber. I don't have a bladder. F oh yeah, I do. Over here. Oopsie. Is it single use or what? Oxygen. The air bladder provides a significant upward thrust to help you get to air faster. So there's five items in this menu. I've made four of them. The other one we already had a bunch just around. So it requires sulfur to make yourself, so we might not have that chance for a while. So now I need a fiber mesh. What does it take to make a fiber mesh? Creep vine samples. Okay, so that's going to be a bit more of an ask. Gotcha. Let's look at our food items. I keep pressing escape to exit. So these frost and enemy hearts, which don't seem to be useful for crafting, are edible. And they give you they fill up your food and your water. Okay, so we have a pretty easy early game system for dealing with that. Can I overstuff a little bit? My food is slightly overstuffed, but otherwise no. Okay, I guess I'll put these blocks away then. At this phase in the game, it's pretty easy to deal with some of this stuff. Okay, put the plan away. I don't need those guys, I guess. Or the flares, necessarily, because I, I have a light. The seed cluster. Let's just process this. You're taking up my inventory space. You're a little easier to clean up there. Okay, so. Off to a good start. Let's uh, organize these. Can I hit? Can I hit one? Like one? Yep. Two. Hmm. Probably knife is two. Three is scanner. Four is flotation. That makes some sort of sense to me. Hey there. Got a knife. Let's use it irresponsibly on my own stuff. Got a flashlight, which has a battery. Ah, so I have reason to craft more batteries there. My scanner requires batteries. And my flotation device. Whoop! 
Hey! Well, that's helpful. Just for not drowning. Whoop. Whoa! Okay, you go. You go hard. Hey, buddy. Penguin. Let's just try to get our scans started. Come here. Come here, you little bastard. I gotta add you to my list. And I'll get around to reading every single one of these. I'll just try to pace them a bit. Come on. Or did I already got a boomerang? I think I'm swimming way faster right now. Right? Because I've got my... Yeah, I've got the fins. They auto-equipped. I just had the thought, like, I don't think I'd have equipped them, actually. They're sea monkeys. Are you friends? Ooh. Ooh. Don't like that. Oxygen. Should I find out the hard way what happens? I don't like this. Okay, nope. Hey! Some Punk! Some wildlife down here is very grabby. I'm gonna drown. Uh, I invented a whole thing for not drowning. I didn't use it. Okay. Hey! Come here. Come here. Thank you. Okay, I appreciate that you're cute and mischievous instead of trying to eat me. But also, don't do that. Don't do that. You can't scan quartz. Red wart. Oh boy. Whoop. The Luna plant. This area is dense with new things. There you go, the nice, solid, one-hit defeat. Immediately lootable. There's so much ore around here. Granted, probably not all aggressively necessary right now. Oxygen. Whoop! Oh god! Full dolphin mode, okay. So now that I crafted a knife, as we know from last time, I should be able to do some of this. There you go. New nope. 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 Grabby little punk. What's down here? I don't know. Oxygen. Kind of unnerving. Ugh, okay. I think it's new. The symbiote. Oh. What are you swimming at? I don't like that. Oh, I don't like that. Not a fan of how it's coming at me. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get out of here. Oxygen. Definitely would like to scan creatures I saw over there, but before I do that, let's please try to get an O2 tank. Because this is really frequent trips to the surface. I saw that little area under the vines, but going deep right now is a bad idea. Okay, so let's review requirements. Fiber mesh, which I should be able to make now. Use up our creep vine samples before they get expired. Ish. Adding additional blueprints to your data bank. 
Now we can make pipes and floating air pumps. And a repair tool requires sulfur. In recipe? Ooh! Was that... Did that exist before? I don't think it did. That's pretty good news. I like that. Means I can keep track of these mechanics on the fly. Okay, so that's requ that requires... That's just copper and then a wiring kit which is made of silver. So I need silver for the wiring kit to then make a compass and then I can actually tell what direction I'm facing most of the time, which is a decent priority at the moment. I would like that. Decomposing creep by sample. And decompose in my belly. Blip. Uh, these ribbon plants are going to decompose too, I think. What was made of ribbon plants? Oh, a battery was ribbon and copper. And I'm all out of copper, aren't I? Collecting too many ribbon plants and not enough copper. Gotcha. Okay. But now that I have an O2 tank, that's 30 seconds of extra oxygen. Very helpful. Now I can actually go deeper into these places without having to constantly turn back. It's a little hard to keep track of directions. That's a big thing. Whoa. Wow. So that's the blizzard that's happening on the surface right now. So we can cut away at the shrooms. The bullseye shroom. Scaly maw anemone? 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 <laughs> Struggling today, apparently. Okay, they're giving me not very happy sounds right now. Don't love that. Galena outcrop. That's different. There you go. Feeling a bit more threatened right now, but I don't know if it's because the area is any more threatening or if it's just because the sun's down. Probably that. Oop. Hang on. We have enough oxygen capacity now that I have to make sure I stay at the surface for a moment. So we actually make some progress. The Twisted Mandrake. One of my missions is just to scan this little bastard from earlier. Maybe get the drop on them before they they the brine wing. Screw that guy. Don't like him. Something is definitely making big whale noises. Oh god. We're getting a little bit more in the open water and I don't love it. Probably just the darkness, but it's way more threatening right now. I would like to think they probably want to hit me with anything really bad for a while, but it's maybe optimistic. Freezes things and attacks them. Delivery status report. Yeah, this is a big deal. A beacon? Just a light, I guess, maybe? 
Those just sea monkey noises? Those arrows with the beacons. They're leading somewhere. Here we go. Hey! The beacons led me to a recipe for beacons. Oh, up is not safe. Nope. No, 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 no. No! Stop! Oh, fuck. Oh, well. <laughs> you died and lost some block. <laughs> Was not expecting to die in the first episode. <clears throat> Man, that sucks. I would have made it back just fine if I went straight for if I just flew normally. I was trying to be, trying to be smart, use those trinkets that people would complain I didn't use. But the uh the air bladder led to a confusion moment. And uh I was like, how do I stop it? It won't stop. Because it was crushing me into the ice, and it wouldn't let, let me continue forward to escape. I, st I still have an air tank, so at least there's that. The issue is I'm not totally sure which direction I died in. Uh-oh. But yeah, did I found out too late that the answer is you need to switch items. So I tried, like, clicking and stuff to, like unuse it. It's like, please stop using the thing that's killing me. And it wasn't working. But if I switch to a different item, then, I'm, then the, the bladder's no longer in effect. This is way deeper. I definitely went in a different direction. What is that? I heard something over there. Oh, there's like a, a pulsing electricity thing going on over there. There's something big over here. Oh, fuck. <clears throat> I wonder if the guys that come after your stuff only come after your stuff if you're holding it out. God, it's so easy to lose track of which direction I'm facing. What is that? It's hostile. It hasn't seen me. It looks like a sea dragon, doesn't it? Are they repopulating? Hmm. That's a concern to think about. Alright, so we're seeing some of our first larger creatures. Much like the original sea dragon, I do not have an immediate fear response because it's really, it's just a silly, it's like a big, it's like a silly dragon. Oxygen. That's the funny thing about irrational versus rational responses to things. Admittedly, like, like video games train you to constantly face dangers that are genuinely threatening and be like, not that faced by it. It's just video games, you, they're just a threat and you fight and you fight them and all that. <clears throat> But, like, there's creature designs and the context of the open ocean that just, like, tap directly into your fear response. And you're like, no, 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 I don't want to be here and I don't want to be with that. A leviathan flying straight at you. To consume you whole. The fact that in the ocean, everything around, everything, everything else that lives here is better conditioned to this environment than you are, and is much more dangerous than you. And they're faster, and more lethal, all at once. Is a problem. And because of the ocean having all this verticality of like, they can go from there, and there, and there, and there, and up, and down, and everywhere, the uh... The things you're afraid of could be creeping up on you at any moment from any direction. Do I need the sun to go down or something? <laughs> like, I, I'm trying to think of like how I'm going to find 
the uh, my own body. I'm not totally sure. What is that? Is that threatening? Friendly? Oh, it's things that that guy, the asshole, froze. Frosted enemy. Whoop. Oh, maybe this is it. Yeah, I need I need beacons and a compass just so I can start. Getting, oh, that's that my stuff. Is that where I died? Oxygen. Okay. God, what a stupid death. I died, like, right next to where I wanted to be. Alright. Oh, yeah, there's some of my stuff. What's that? Creature egg. There's a few of these around. <clears throat> yeah, I probably dropped this, too. Hard to say. This stuff just is around. What a silly death to have. Beacon fragment? Pathfinder tool. Here we go. What's that? Warning. 30 seconds of oxygen remaining. What is that? A Titan hook! <laughs> Ah, fuck you. Okay, that is... All right, well, I, I gotta deal with something else right now. Don't come after me. Oh, shit. No, don't freeze me. Okay, there's a number of pro there's some problems. Okay. So, big grabby dudes, not a threat. Weird, long-nosed, snorkel dudes, threat. They freeze you. Uh... Red guys, they're kind of small and easy to not notice amongst all the small, uh, amongst all the other fish that aren't threatening, is a threat. Watch out for that guy, he just came up and stung me. A little shit. But they're still smaller than me at least, so they're not that scary. Just rude, mostly. A titan whole fish. I remember the whole fish. So there's super duper big hole fish that are look like sunfish in this game, but they still have the big stupid hole in their body. Ow! Stop it! Oh shit, where's the way up? Uh, 30 seconds is actually a decent amount of time, so I shouldn't be that worried. That's just snow falling, right? Yeah. One of the funny quirks of how you burst back above the ocean surface. No, don't freeze me. Oh, fuck! There's more than one! Nope. Nope. No, 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 no. I need to stop gathering this stuff, actually. What I, what I need is copper. Okay, let's get out of here. <laughs> this environment's being a dick to me. And I'm not really into that right now. Alright, the important thing is we found our first wreckage spot. Or not really a wreckage, it was more like a a depot? A camp? Something? A way station? So I think I'm, I'm about ready to head back to base. That was a big sound, I didn't like that. Nope. Stop being grabby. Oxygen. They make cute dolphin noises. But I've learned that dolphins are kind of concerning in real life too, so it's not actually as comforting as it could be. Ah. Okay, I got my stuff back. We got some recipes. And so that was basically like the loop this game has in Microcosm. You just constantly hear large animal sounds. I wonder how close some of them might be. Whew! Alright, let's close this episode out with some context. Notice of death. Dear Miss Ayu, on behalf of Zeta Landon 4546B, 
robotic section leader, and Indra Cormac, president of Altera Transgov, I regret to inform you of the death of Samantha Ayu. She died on planet 4546B, regrettably as the result of injuries sustained in an accident arising from her own negligence. Please allow me to communicate the most profound condolences for the loss of your sister. While further details are unavailable at this time, you will receive contact from the Department of Insurance and Recuperation concerning your responsibilities as next of kin, with regards to p repayment of damages and legal fees. <laughs> uh, yep, that's Altera. It's like, hey, so let's go. You, just get in touch, and you'll find out about your financial responsibilities for the your dead family member. This is going to cost you significantly. If you have any questions, you may file form blah blah blah, and your query will be addressed in sequential order. Sincerely, Emmanuel Deschardins, liaison, Altera Transgov. Robin, guess what? I got the job. I'm going to 4546B. Now I'll be able to improve the mechanical avian amphibian under real-world stress conditions. Listen, I know your stance on Altera, but I just hope you're happy your sis is happy. I sure hope my sis is happy. <laughs> I can't wait till we talk again. Oh, I wanted to ask you something. Can you watch my Augie while I'm away? I need someone I can trust to look after my best little potato. <laughs> oh, potato, listen. I tried, but that name is just not sticking. He's my little extra bite. I'll leave the starchy tubers and nicknames to you. Anyway, if you say yes, thanks, baby sis. Love you. 4546B to Robin. Come in, Robin. <laughs> Remember when we used to play old-timey space explorer? This is kind of like that, but it's even harder to communicate. <laughs> Well, let's see. I got your last message. Altera is not, as you put it, alterrorizing me. Things are going well. My project has a new name. Say goodbye to the mechanical avian amphibian and hello to spy penglings. We're training the bots to mimic the creatures. Check out the photo. And I think I'm kind of seeing someone. <laughs> I know it's not like me to just find a date let alone on a mostly uninhabited water planet, but actually, you know what? Forget I said anything. <laughs> yeah, it's it's probably not even a real thing, but anyway, um, I'm sorry to hear Xenoworks might be strapped in the revenue department. Sounds like they still have you busy Xenoworking, though. <laughs> I know there's no way to guarantee an alien intelligence startup will succeed, but you've put so much into it. I hope they find a way to keep going. I know how much it means to you getting to work at a small place where you have control over your research. All right, I gotta go. Later, baby sis. Love you. Mmm, we encountered Xenoworks messaging earlier, and I didn't really know what to do with that yet. But it's a Altera competitor. Competitor might be putting it strongly, because considering Altera seems to be some kind of nightmare mega corporation, and Xenoworks seems to be an indie startup that's not doing well. But it means that any Altera tech I'm, nag I'm nabbing continue forward here and get my work done is uh, unauthorized. Oh yeah, it even says Xenoworks right here on my tablet. Calorie intake recommended. Yes, yes, I will eat a food. Blork, blork, blork. Vital signs stabilizing. Decomposing bullseye. Oop. Yep. Might have to deal with that later. <laughs> hey, Robin! I got your Augie photo. Thanks so much for taking care of him, even though he's a cranky potato. Hey, the nickname actually fits that way. A cranky potato. I know he can be a handful, but I really appreciate it. I'm a bit worried about my other baby, the mission. One of my penglings found something, something big. But Altera is just like, nothing to see here. Honestly, kind of glad you can't answer so you can't, you know, rub it in my face. Go ahead bask in the fact that you were a little bit right about them. My project is on the line. My job. My safety. Um, I heard about Xenoworks getting bought. I'm sorry. But at least you still have your job. I guess you're one of us now. 
Like it or not, welcome to the Altera family. I, I should probably go before I say something I regret. Love you. Keep your chin up. Eye on the alien prize. Mmm, she found something and they're covering it up. I wonder if it's something we know about from the first game or if it's a whole brand new concept. I said, but I, I could really use a friend. Hey, Robin. I'm sorry, my last message was so awful. I've been under a lot of stress. I'm not sure what's going on with anything. I can't really talk about it either. Oh, and I'm definitely not dating anyone on this water planet. Don't know what I was thinking there. Have I told you how cold it is here? Get this, I can't even get my wash and go dry before the wind freezes the moisturizer in my hair. Wild, right? Well, anyway, I'm sure you're mad at me after what I said, but I, I could really use a friend. You're my sister. I love you. I'm sorry. What's going on there? Hey, welcome to the Altera family. So Altera bought Xenoworks. But like this wasn't that this wasn't much of like a fight message, right? So either we're missing something. Uh it's a message that sh that uh Robin just didn't keep around maybe. So we don't have the context or maybe Altera didn't let the message get out because of something that was in it. That would have compromised something because they wouldn't let they wouldn't let the information be transmitted. Are they still doing the same thing where they? Yeah, they are. They're still doing the thing where the the waveform is the same on every single one of these and does not reflect the message in any way. Yeah, that that's a mood swing. What's going on here? Hey, Robin. I, I really need someone to know. I'm afraid something terrible is going to happen. You were completely right about Altera, okay? You were right. I was wrong. And the cat should be called Potato. I admit it. <laughs> mm, sorry. Bad attempt at a joke. I, I just... I don't know what to do. I guess I should just come out and say it at this point. I've said this much already. We found a frozen leviathan that's infected with Kara. Altera thinks they can use it for something. Weapons, experimental treatments, a whole range of things. But one end of the range is ugly, dangerous, but, but profitable, of course. What if it gets out while we're messing around with it? Or worse, what if it ends up a bioweapon in the wrong hands? I, I hope I'm overreacting, but I don't think I am. Anyway, message me back, please. I could really use a friend. You're my sister. I love you. That's bad. Okay. So now st the stakes are set. It's the disease that we cured last game. It's there's there's still a frozen sample that still contains it. A Leviathan. Uh I'm already imagining it. You see this big, horrible, frozen leviathan, and then you just really don't like the look of it. But hey, at least it's frozen, right? Can't wait for that to stop being true, and then I have to deal with the fact that it's not frozen. Ugh. Well, get ready for that. Alright. Decent start to all this. You get, You guys got a good look at the the basic gameplay loop of all this, followed by... A good look at the uh, the narrative stakes and what the hell's going on this time around. The stage has been set. I'm gonna cook some fish, refill my meters, and call it a day. And then we're gonna settle in for the long haul on this one. <laughs> Thanks for watching, like always, guys. I'll see you next time.